Greetings to everyone. Uh, as Andy said, my name is Nancy Lorenzi, and my goals tonight are to first tell you about what we're going to do, second, a little more about Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and then finally I want to talk a little bit about our innovation pillar. It's one of the things that we're working on. So you have a listing. The next slide shows you who our people are, and if we could click to that slide. The First person, I'm just giving you an overview. Dr. Betsy Weiner, who I will later introduce again, is the person it, who really knows about the competencies for uh, learning and in Second Life. We're then going to go to how we use virtual reality here at Vanderbilt. And then we're going to speak about diabetes. And they are coming into our medical center. And if you could look on the left-hand side, that is the medical center. On the right-hand side, you will see the campus, which is nice and green, and we are the, all, the ones with all the buildings. Next slide, please. This is more about our medical center. And so at Vanderbilt, we have over 1,500 clinical practitioners. About 100 percent reported that they really would like to have more faculty development in this area. We in the state of Tennessee, as part of the Robert Wood Johnson grant, have had two face-to-face -face simulation conferences as part of this RWJ grant, but faculty are clamoring for more than just um, an annual face-to-face -face experience. I really wanted to have an island that allowed faculty to put together simulations that could be delivered in an inpatient environment, an outpatient environment, a nursing home environment, and a home environment. Uh, next slide, please. These are the intermediate tasks that we've uh, put together for Second Life. Um, we'll be um, having a demonstration video for some of these things, but certainly not every one of these tasks are going to be required of our people in order to get through their simulation management experience. But these are things that we believe to be intermediate tasks for those people who would like to um, experience uh, Second Life. Our Second Life competencies that we spelled out as part of what, what we wanted uh, to accomplish. And um, I don't know, we haven't really run our pilots yet to begin to understand how much support people are going to need, but um, the technical help certainly is, is high on that list. Now, when I got my master's degree, there was actually a minor in nursing education, and I actually went on to a unit for a semester and did clinical teaching with another clinical teacher. We don't do that anymore, but it was a wonderful opportunity for me to understand how to provide the right kind of feedback how to deal with difficult situations and that sort of thing. So it's the same, same thing that we're going to do in this environment. Next slide, please. The debriefing and reflection part of any simulation management experience is the most difficult and the task that our faculty need mentoring more from other people about how well they did. And part of the issue is you can script a simulation all you want and assign roles but no two simulations end up playing out the same way because of the human aspect and the way people react to something somebody else said or, or did. So these happen to be the competencies that we've agreed upon to deal with the, uh, the debriefing and reflection aspects and um, certainly are the part that our faculty need practice in uh, a little bit more. Next slide, please. As far as the evaluation component, that, that is also a very important part and will be included as part of this faculty development process. And of course, this is an example of a clinical application, and I'm talking about an educational informatics application. But I'm believing that we can use the same um, aspect of a dashboard to show the growth of how nursing faculty are growing. And we can also use this notion of an educational dashboard 
as we educate our students because they perform things in a simulated lab and they perform things in a clinical practicum. We don't frequently put those two things together. What's the value add that Second Life provides? Um, you know, why, why should we use Second Life as opposed to audio conferencing or why should we use Second Life instead of video conferencing? Uh, what is it that Second Life provides that may not be answered by some of these other technologies that are out there? Some of them easier technologies to use like the telephone and uh, very stable technologies uh, have been around for a long time. Okay, uh, this is our island. Uh, this is the conference center that we're building right now. Um, I'm actually using Betsy's avatar to go ahead and guide us around. So we're actually building our own orientation area. We've actually, to keep our screen geography from, um, uh, from taking place on the ground, we've actually created that up in the air. Uh, that's located up uh, above the island, and you can teleport up to it, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. What we did on this is the instructor can actually sit outside the building, and what we created was one-way glass, so that uh, to the person actually participating, they think they're in this kind of enclosed room, but we actually allow the instructor to sit outside, and through one-way glass, they can actually watch the person manipulate through this environment. We have uh, an elevator, takes us up to the various different floors. We're actually going to take the top two floors and combine them in one floor. Uh, we've been looking for a way to produce a group kind of center, very much like what you're seeing here. We've looked at a lot of different floor plans and models. And Andy, I think you need to know, uh, we think we like yours the best, far and away the best. And we're going to take and reproduce uh, what you have here on a smaller scale uh, on the, um, uh, on the uh, top floor of our conference center. Uh, here we're actually able to control PowerPoints, and we have it set up so that the instructor can actually control it, so it does not require a second person to uh, participate in it. We decided that that was particularly important. 